Starhopper 200 meter hop test latest info, Starship updates, Starship presentation delayed, Link Bell 248 and Delta 4 mediums last launch. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Before we get this episode started, I would like to ask for some feedback from you. You might have noticed that something has changed on today's episode. We have a new intro. By the way, this was only possible due to all the patrons who give me that extra time needed to do this kind of work. To keep it short, I'd like to ask you for some feedback on it, so tell me in the comments. Now, there have been loads of things happening in the space industry lately, so as always, let's dive right in. Starhopper 200 meter hop, the latest info. As a frequent visitor of the channel, you might have already noticed my recent community update on the new test dates. If you have not, I can recommend checking the community tab daily as I am very active there too. Short notice infos, stuff that might not have made it into the current episode, all that goes into the community tab. So you don't have to wait until the next episode to get the latest info. Activate the bell on the channel to get notifications when I post there. It's worth it. So we have new test dates for today, August 26th to 28th, with today being the primary test date. The window is open on all three days from 2pm to 12am local time. As SpaceX has always tested the hopper at night though, it's logical to assume the test might be in the evening to night time. We also have a notum for these days. What we do not have yet though is an FAA approval. Though Elon seems to be very confident that the hop will happen tonight on August 26th. So let's cross our fingers and see. If you're watching the episode at a later date and I am talking to the future, I hope you had fun with an epic 200 meter hop test. Undoubtedly in preparation for the 200 meter test, SpaceX has also been busy giving the launch site a proper makeover. Everything has been straightened out and modeled properly. It makes the site look much better and safer to use. Good job! There's new info on what comes after the 200 meter hop test. Elon tweeted about Starhopper's fate after it's done its final flight. According to Musk, Starhopper won't get on display somewhere, which honestly is sad in my opinion. It's become some sort of friend or mascot to the whole program lately. People are even giving it nicknames like Hoppy. But that seems to be of little importance for SpaceX as they want to turn it into a vertical test stand for Raptor engines. So it will always want to hop, but it won't be allowed anymore. What a sad fate for such a personalized object. Starship updates. There is more info on SpaceX's Starship presentation as well. What was supposed to happen long ago has been delayed yet again. This time due to Elon wanting Starship to have three Raptor engines, moving body fins and a landing gear installed. Interestingly, he assumes that this will already be the case by mid-September. So it's bad and good news at the same time. And first parts are already arriving. The moving body fins have been manufactured as predicted in episode 26. These technically difficult parts will most certainly be built outside of Boca Chica and delivered to the construction site. Possibly Hawthorne, California is the place to look at for these parts. They have been delivered early last week and are now being prepared for mounting. Since SpaceX has only three weeks according to Elon's timeline to do fins, legs and engines on Starship Mark 1, they will have to pull some night shifts. They have also been installing another bulkhead into the lower section. They will need a total of three of these. The bottom one is in already. This one then should be the common dome shared by LOX and methane tank. After that only the top bulkhead is needed. Then LOX feeder and header tanks, if Starship has header tanks, will need to be installed. We're making progress. The nose cone, which was taken down a while ago, has been finished up and restacked on the Starship prototype. As you can see in Lab Padre's stream, they used the newly delivered large crane to lift it. It seemed to have no trouble handling the weight, though for the whole prototype we will need something even larger than that. But what about it? How large are we talking exactly? What would be needed to lift the upper section and later even the whole starship? Something has been delivered a few days ago, something big. Delivery after delivery, people soon realized that this was something of a whole different category. Lots of parts, girders, tracks, a chassis, and then it was assembled. First let me play some proper music for this. There we go, better. 
let me introduce you to the Link Belt 248, the proper machine to lift our dreams. The Link Belt 248 is a heavy lift crane with some hefty stats to it. Its operational weight is 158 metric tons. Its lift capacity is 181 metric tons. Its main boom can extend all the way up to 86.9 meters. That's 285 feet for our American viewers. Considering that Starship will weigh less than 90 metric tons, this should enable SpaceX to stack the orbital prototype lower and upper half with ease. It should even be able to stack the finished prototype on top of a super heavy booster. Height and lift capacity are more than enough to finish the job. It is already operational and we'll see it in action soon. The work on the wind barrier grid structure is done now. The roof has been finished recently. Now we should finally see them cover it up. It might be the same white cloth they used in Coco to cover the hangar. We will see soon. Delta 4 Medium's last launch. This news is one of those topics I just want to cover because it's so important. Recently we saw an era come to its end. The Delta IV Medium did its final flight on August 22nd from Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 37. The Delta rocket family has been launching since the 60s. In fact, Delta I had its first launch on May 13th, 1960. Though recent market changes due to the emergence of certain disruptive technologies in the launch market, such as reusable boosters, have led to a strong decline in Delta launches. Delta IV Heavy is now exclusively used for heavy military satellite contracts and Delta IV Medium has had trouble getting contracts for a while. Now ULA, the current manufacturer of the Delta rocket family, has pulled the plug on it. Since its introduction in 2002, the 63 meter tall Delta IV Medium has flown a total of 29 times, 15 of those in today's two booster configuration. The payload on this mission was a Magellan GPS-3 satellite manufactured by Lockheed Martin, Orbital ATK and Northrop Grumman. It's the second of up to 32 third generation GPS satellites built for the US Air Force. The new series of satellites was significantly delayed from 2014 to 2018. The satellite launches are divided into three blocks with the last of the 10 satellites for Block A scheduled for launch in Q3 of 2023. The first GPS-3 satellite was launched in December of 2018 on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. This launch featured a Delta IV Medium Plus 4.2 variant. The 4 stands for a 4 meter fairing and the 2 stands for the two solid rocket motors or SRMs built by Orbital ATK attached to the core providing an additional 127 tons of thrust each. They use hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene as fuel which is a translucent liquid with a color similar to wax paper and a viscosity similar to corn syrup. Inside the booster it binds with the oxidizing agent and forms a solid but elastic mass. The strongest variant of the Delta IV medium rockets was the 5.4 with four SRMs attached. It was not needed for today's launch though. Each Delta IV consists of at least one common booster core or CBC. Each CBC is powered by one Aerojet Rocketdyne SR68 engine which burns liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Because the hydrogen is exhausted out of the rocket at the bottom before launch and hydrogen tends to raise up, you can see the typical reddish flames char the rocket before liftoff on every Delta launch. The RS-68 engines and the two solid rocket motors ignited properly and lifted the Delta rocket off the pad. Delta IV began a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure the vehicle experiences during flight. This was needed as the Delta IV reached supersonic speeds at 44 seconds into the flight. At T plus 1 minute and 33 seconds the SRMs burned out and got jettisoned 7 seconds later. The RS-68 booster engine is burning its fuel at a rate of 453 kilograms per second at this point. Then at T plus 3 minutes and 53 seconds the rocket experienced a good booster engine cutoff followed by a stage separation. Of course this is done to reduce weight. After separation the rocket weighed only a little less than 9% of what it weighed at liftoff. So for the first 150 km of height and a speed of roughly 5 km per second, the rocket uses 91% of its mass. Then the RL-10 main engine was ignited and shortly after the fairing got separated, revealing the GPS-3 satellite payload. 
This burn lasted for another 9 minutes. The upper stage then entered a long coasting phase followed by a second burn that brought the GPS-3 satellite to a good transfer orbit. Then the satellite used onboard propulsion to enter its final orbit and join the other GPS satellites. Even though the Delta IV rocket family is getting more and more pressure from SpaceX, it achieved a total of 40 launches of which only one was a partial success. The successor of the Atlas and Delta rocket family, the Vulcan rocket, is planned for a first launch in 2021. Good luck with future launches and go ULA! So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will SpaceX be able to assemble the Starship prototype by mid-September for the presentation? And how did you like the new intro? As always, tell me in the comments. Here we are again at the end of the episode thanking our brave patrons for the support in making What About It just that little bit better each episode. And as in every single episode there are more helpers for the list. Thank you very much Kenneth Altonen and Erik Rode, the Swedish giant. Thank you so much for your support, it's just amazing. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I really love doing, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. It is already in oper- it's already in operational. It makes the site look much, much. Mm. <laughs> it makes the site look much, <laughs> much. <laughs> what? It makes- <laughs> what's that thing? Yeah, it's big. What about it, baby? <laughs>